I landed back at 6.30 this morning from Japan and we are right back at the shop getting straight into work. LZ Fest is about 30 days from this day right here and the list of things we have to do. So these two cars is longer than I would like to have it. Today's video is obviously about the Fevo and the first thing we're doing, because this thing is going to be kind of a drift car but also a track car but you know, we always end up drifting these things. We need a lot of lock in a drift car. So we're about to modify our S13 front end. So right now Waz is removing the wheels and we need to pull the knuckles out of this thing because we are doing some custom cut and shut front knuckles to give this thing a lot of lock. So currently the knuckles are completely stock as you can see here. Everything here is kind of just dummy fitted for now. And as you can see the angle of like this tie rod here is quite far back. But we're about to cut and shut these knuckles so the pickup point is closer to the front. That'll give us more lock and obviously give us our geometry back. We're gonna cut and shut them. Look at that, that's not enough lock. We'll drop it under. Yeah. Cut it, drop it under and move it out. Move it out, it gives us more Ackerman. 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 He's been on the beers. Ackerman. Yeah, so you can bring it down as well. That uh, helps with bumps there. So that we try and get this, this tie rod down to flat again so that when you hit a bump, it doesn't kind of pull the steering wheel out of your hands. This stuff is all science based and we are not going to try and explain it properly to you guys because we don't really understand it ourselves. But basically we want big lock and we don't want it to bind. And at the same time, obviously, we need to make sure that we have clearance for the big lock. So we'll cut and shut these, but then we need to start cutting some stuff out of here and out of the old frame rails because this is the old frame rail, this is the new frame rail so we need to cut and box this out so that when we turn our wheel to full lock obviously it doesn't hit anything basically. Clearance. I think clearance is the word you're looking for. Clearancing yeah we can't use a hammer this time. Then we've got to make all this look actually tidy and nice so big job ahead of us and uh, there's no time like the present let's pull these knuckles out of this car. Arigato gozaimasu. So here we have the knuckle out of the car. We removed the brake and the hub off the knuckle as well because you don't want to leave that stuff on obviously when you're welding and it's all super hot. So we're going to make an incision right through here and then I don't actually know what we're going to do after that because I've never done this before but Woz knows. Cut it right here. If you S13 people, where this little indentation here ends, just here, you want it to end there. Cut out 12 millimeters. Cut out 12 millimeters. Cut out 12 millimeters. Yep. You flatten off this little risey bit just here. Yep. And then you take that piece and you put it under here and you move it out so it's almost in a straight line with the plane that this is on here. There you go. And then rotate, you rotate, the rotation's about five degrees less. Amazing. Otherwise your tie rod will bind. We don't want no bind. Oh, it's something, something, but we'll do it vague enough and she'll be sick, boy. Yeah, this thing's gonna steer sick. Sick feedback. Mad jack flicks. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, let's go. paint and of course we're gonna put something a little spicy on them so we've got our satin black here good to go and then of course we've got to throw a little sparkle at it gotta have these things looking spicy before we throw them back in the car while we're at it we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of the front end out as well we're gonna finish all these arms off paint them and put them back in that way that whole job is just done which would be bloody amazing and then we need to put everything back together and figure it out where the wheels are gonna hit and so we can Boom, cut it out, box it in, and hopefully we can have this whole front end finish with a lot of lock. Cause we wanna throw some backies in this thing, so uh, let's get painting. All right, time to throw the sparkle on, and this is what makes them look the goods. Just like that, our whole front end is painted, boxed in, welded, and ready to go. Look at this. So we have our caster arms here that we extended. I actually got was to TIG these, so they've been TIGged. Extended 20 mils, that gives us all of the adjustment that we need, fantastic. Here are our caster arm brackets. These are stock, I just painted them because I wanted them to look nice. We've got our LCAs that we've extended, adjusted the geometry on a little bit. And underneath, we also boxed them in just to give them in a little bit of extra strength. And of course, we have our beautiful knuckles that were jigged and welded by Woz. So we're ready to install everything. And Nathan's here. Hi. Hi. And you got your safety boots on, which is good. Ready to go. Fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this stuff in. Freaking excited, if I'm honest. And then we can test out the angle and make sure that it's not gonna hit anything, which it definitely is. And then we're gonna have to cut and box some stuff out, which is, is what it is. One other quick thing I did as well was 
these bolts going through the rails here that everything bolts to, they were just like sitting in there and you'd have to use the Allen key on top, which was real annoying. So I went ahead and welded these on so that you don't have to do that and you literally can just do the bolt up from the bottom. I will go to the bolt shop and swap these bolts here out for nylock bolts just so we can tighten everything up and it's all rad and stays tight instead of rattling loose. So we're definitely making some great progress, but now it's time to throw this stuff in the car. Yes. All of our shiny bits are in and sparkly and it looks awesome. Very, very happy with this. It's gonna look so good once we underseal everything. So now all we need to do is throw the hub onto our spindle or whatever the frick you call this thing and then put the wheel on and then we're gonna test the lock and see exactly where it hits. It's gonna have a lot of lock. You can see it already just by, look at that. Like it's gonna be, she's gonna be hectic. So we're gonna have to make all the clearance in the world for this lock. It's so freaking weird doing this to a Lancer. Like it's so good. <laughs> I can't wait to stand from the front once we've got the wheels on and we'll clearance it all and see how much lock this thing's actually gonna have. Look at this, the car is on the ground and it looks so weird seeing a Lancer with big lock, but it looks so freaking cool. So we wanted to get it under compression a little bit just to see where exactly it was gonna hit in the wheel wells. And we were pretty correct. It's just hitting the frame rail, as you can see, right here. And then it does exactly the same uh, around the back here, but it's nowhere near as bad as we first thought it would be, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna mark under there, and then what we'll do is cut it out, notch it out, so that we can get the maximum lock out of the kit, which will be really cool, but like, it's that's not at full lock at the moment, and it's pretty darn good, which is very exciting. Look at the sparkly bits underneath, it looks so cool. So uh, we did have a bit of a problem up top with the top hat, so we didn't anticipate the angle of the top hat. So the way that this is sitting, because it's so flat this way, when you dial angle into the car, it actually binds the spherical joint. So what we've had to do at the moment, we don't know exactly if we're going to go ahead and change the top hats at all, we may do, um, but we're actually running spaces on this side at the back of the top hat to angle it down and that basically gives us our geometry back in the top spherical so that we can get full lock without the spherical joint binding. So it's pretty interesting. We're definitely learning on the job with all this stuff. I don't mind the spaces too much. We have a very limited amount of time to get this thing ready. Obviously redoing these top hats before LZ Fest will be a huge job. This will definitely do the job for now. So it's likely that we'll leave that for now and we can change it in a future iteration of the car. So we're gonna mark the inner wheel wells now and we'll go ahead and get cutting. Thanks Nathan for your help. We both pretty stupid. It took both of our brains to even figure that problem out, so. But we go. We almost drilled new holes and stuff and then we realized our problem. Happy days. Let's go. that in obviously with plates once we're happy with the actual amount that we've taken out but quickly just now we're gonna test how much so that's tie rod and wheel that's tie rod hitting wheel yeah so you say you back it off so you back it off with a lock Pretty stop much. yeah you at about three four mil oh yeah before it even touches the firewall and i don't think we're gonna run that much lock though i think we'll dial it back quite a bit with the lock stoppers so We've got clearance all around there, which is awesome. And we're never going to go that far because that's literally wheel on caster right well, now. What's so. interesting is, I think when that compresses, the wheel's going to come forward. Yeah, it comes forward and we get that, way more. Because that's a huge gap compared to where I measured from. It is, yeah. All right, so we're day three of this video now. This stuff takes so much freaking time. So much attention to detail, so much measuring. We're making some good progress. So right now what I'm doing is boxing off the areas that we have cut out. Here is the section right here. It looks a little bit average right now, but we're gonna make it look prettier. As you can see here, I've already rounded off this corner. We're gonna do it to all the corners to make it look super nice. And then what we do, we're back to the templating with cardboard. Get a piece of cardboard. I push it in against these surfaces so it makes the marks and then I cut it out and 
boom, that becomes our template for the piece of metal that we're going to make. To weld in there, we'll do the same thing for the back side. And then back here to clearance it out, we actually just ended up cutting slits. And then we cut a piece out from the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll weld this nice and tidily. And then we'll bend these bits up so it's all super nice and weld that up as well. And you pretty much, once you've done the underseal, you won't even notice. We're gonna underseal all the guards. Yeah, that's what we're doing now. So Nathan's doing all the dirty crap with the Ooh. grinder flapping, <laughs> flappy disking everything off. I'm making the templates and we'll go ahead and weld it in. A lot of cutting, grinding, a lot of dust, a lot of crap. Our front quarter is now ready to underseal. Everything is boxed up, so I've masked everything off that we need to mask, and then we get a magical underseal, and we're gonna get spraying. I absolutely love this stuff. Tidies everything up and makes it all look brand new again under here, which is cool. So when we put all of our suspension and everything back together, it just looks absolutely awesome in here. I feel like we're slowly getting better at what we do on this channel. in our car, and how good does that all look? Absolutely amazing, the blue pops on the black. We've got our brand new GK Tech brake lines in as well, which just kind of make it look even nicer, but everything looks sweet. I'm using the current discs and brake pads. The brake pads are basically brand new, and the discs look sweet, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue. I'll replace them if I have time before LZ Fest, but we must remember, we actually have the main car to get ready, which is the E36, and we've got a bunch of work to do on that. So like, we can't get too carried away with trying to make this insane, and obviously replacing things that probably don't need to be replaced. Like, these brakes will stop, and stop fine, you know? So it's all good, but like, that looks crazy. I'm super happy with it. Everything looks much tidier than it did at the start of the video. But now we're taking a quick break to do something that you guys reminded me of and that is when we installed the clutch last time in this car You guys let me know that it, we installed it wrong and so we're correcting it So we have our crazy OS Gaiken clutch here This thing is like single plate but like almost like twin plate like it's the same design as a twin plate and it's full carbon So the pressure plate disc slides over these posts But I actually had it like in between the posts last time so we've corrected that and we're gonna throw the gearbox back into the car and that'll be that all done which is awesome so thank you guys very much for that feedback because it would have been catastrophic had we actually tried to push the clutch in and use it so yeah pretty stoked that we actually caught that so thank you guys you're all legends and with the magic of youtube our gearbox is all back in and the clutch is installed properly we have a brand new slave cylinder here and a brand new gk tech clutch line that works perfectly with our mitsubishi lancer master which is amazing this rubber here is busted so we're gonna have to go ahead and order one of those which is fine but that is that done which is free Freaking awesome. So all we need now is our drive shaft. So I've got the front half and I've got the back half, so the MX-5 back half, the Nissan front half, and then we just need to take it to GJ Drive Lines and get them to make one drive shaft out of the two. Next up, we can put the wheels on the car, put the car on the ground, and we can test the lock with the steering wheel for the first time and see if all of our mathematics actually make sense. Big lock in a Lancer, first time in the world, probably. I mean, maybe the Tokyo Drift one had big lock in it. I don't know, I have to go back and look that up. Let's go. Time to come down. So satisfying, so much work. Did not realize how much work there was gonna to be to do that. I should have known how much work it was going to be considering it's a completely different car, the front of another car in a different car, which is actually crazy when you think about it, so. Yeah boy, that's what's up. So good. It is on the ground, that's wicked. Yeah, they got a bit of camber now, which is cool because it means we can dial it out. All right, moment of truth. Do you wanna turn the steering wheel? Let's see how much lock this thing has. Keep going. Oh man. So that, that's sick, dude. And the trailing wheel here as well, you can tell it's got some scrub like was said. It is absolutely unreal seeing this on a Lancer. It looks so cool. That's <laughs> so cool, man. Absolutely awesome. So it looks like this about the same amount of lock again. You think that's enough lock? Yeah. 
I think it's good. That, that static lock, like... That's, yeah, true. If you had the pump, I'm just getting to the point where it's too hard to turn the wheel. With ah, it. yep. So a little right. bit more with the fuel, uh, with the power steering pump. It'll probably turn more, and then once you're actually driving, it's yeah. gonna be more again, and more. Woo! I think it's gonna be fun to drive, dude. Wow, it's so, it's just tripping me out seeing this on a Lancer. It's awesome. Big lock Lancer guy. All right, I got a little bit G'd up and we chucked the intercooler and radiator and stuff back on the car. Look at this, man. This thing is coming together so freaking well. Was actually extended the tanks on our intercooler so that we can get our 90s nicely around the frame rails, but we're not gonna use blue joiners. I'm ordering black joiners, so everything will be black, so don't panic about that. I'm not really all about the blue joiners, especially with the way everything is. But we put the intercooler piping back in, and like, even just doing a couple of little things, the car just looks complete again, or more complete, and it just makes you so freaking satisfied and pumped for how this thing's gonna look. And that front end is just another huge job that we've knocked out of the park. Bailey's coming tomorrow. We're filming the video doing the full exhaust system on the car. Lots of things happening in a very short amount of time. Now, as it stands, we have 28 days before LZ Fest to finish this thing and have the E36 ready. That may mean that we do a closed door respray on this thing, which is fine. I don't mind that too much. Um, and then we can go ahead maybe in the future and paint the door shuts and all that stuff. So there's still plenty to do, but like you can't be mad at this. It's all coming together so well. CA looks so good in the engine bay. Thank you for your help, Nathan, as always. We're actually gonna stay behind now after pizza and continue to work on the car. <laughs> Little things that we don't need to film, we're gonna continue to do tonight. Yeah, thank you guys so much as always for the support. I know you're enjoying the series just as much as I'm enjoying building the car. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't because you know, things are just gonna keep getting better and better. Thank you guys, as always. I'll see you in the next video. You poose! Bye, Nathan. Yeah! Look at that, man. Big lock on the Lancer. Can't be mad at that. Woo!